Hello, everybody, and welcome tonight to Sunday Night Stock Zoom Call. I hope you had a productive last week and you're having a powerful weekend. Looking forward to a prosperous upcoming week in the market. Family, this is not financial advice. This Zoom is for entertainment, education, excitement, and empowerment so that you can make your own personal financial choices. All financial decisions made by viewers should be done after talking with a licensed professional. Hey, Janaya, talk to us. What's happening this week in the market? Good evening, everyone. Um, just a few updates about what's happening this week. Um, mostly earnings calls. So Monday, Tesla has their earnings call. Tuesday, Microsoft, Google, Visa, UPS all have their earnings calls. Uh, Wednesday, Apple, Facebook, PayPal, Pfizer all have their earnings calls. Thursday, Amazon, MasterCard, Samsung Electronics all have their earnings calls. And Friday, uh, Procter & Gamble, Exxon Mobil, and Chevron Core all have their earnings calls. Lastly, Citigroup and Blackstone, as well as Paychex Inc., all have dividends that they will be paying out this week. And that's all that's happening in the market this week. Thank you. Appreciate that. Listen, tonight it is a plum pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege to introduce to SNS my friend, my sister, my cohort in the work to help lift all of humanity. Listen, she reminds me of the woman at the well. Yes, in John chapter 4, who told all that would listen, come see a man. So tonight, if you feel like you've lost your way, she's got you. Sick and tired of being sick and tired, she's got you. Broke, busted, and disgusted, she's got you. Homeless, lost your children, drug abuse, divorce, she's got you. Listen, we're not wasting any time tonight. Let's get straight to it. Put on your seatbelt and get ready to ride the grace, the grace bus, that is. For the very first time on Sunday Night Stocks, we have Miss Jenny Albo. Miss J, what say you? Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for having me. It's truly an honor to be here and be, and be able to speak to each of you about what Charing Love's doing in the community. I guess I wanted to ask a, a, a question. How many of you know about Charing Love? Can I see hands? Well. Showering Love is a 52-foot city bus that we converted into mobile showers. It is ADA compliant. So we have two, um, two bathrooms, which are totally ADA compliant. We are fully self-contained. We're the first in the world to be fully self-contained. And what does that mean? It means we don't have to hook up to anything. We literally pull up, we open up, and we welcome up our guests. We call the the community we serve and, and they're unhoused, our guests, because they are our guests. And they get to come on the bus. So we meet them where they are physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. They get to come on the bus. They get to go into a private bathroom. When you're homeless, as I was, you're always in the eyes of the public. You never have time to be with yourself. So it was very important when we built Grace that they had privacy and that they felt safe when they're in a very vulnerable state. So um, they get to go in, shut a door, be alone with themselves. There's mirrors in each bathroom there so they can see themselves. And there's subliminal messages throughout the bus that says, don't ever give up. Always get up. Remember, you matter. Hold on. There's hope. And how do I know that? Well, my name is Jeannie Alba, and I was homeless for 10 years. I never thought that I would be homeless. Not me. Not me. My family was shocked. Um, you know, I, I, I did well for myself. I married wealthy. I got the big house. I got the Porsche and the Mercedes and the Rolex. And and to the outside, they thought I had the world in the palm in my hand. But what they didn't know is that inside I was suffering. I'd kept many secrets that I had never told. See, I became a perfectionist, an overachiever. And every goal I ever set for myself, I obtained. 
I eventually became, I'm a professional barrel racer by trade, and I became ninth in the world. Two weeks after that, I was at a fast food restaurant with one of my sons, and I slipped and fell, and I broke my back long leg. One in a million people break their back like that. I was prescribed pain pills. And for the first time in my life, yeah, it took away the physical pain. For the first time in my life, it had taken away the emotional pain. All the secrets that I had been hiding. See, and I say this openly and share it, and I try to be transparent. Because if there's someone out there that is going through this, has went through this, I want them to know there's hope and that there's a light on the other side. And I heard as we open that if God brings you to it, he's going to bring you through it. Hope stands for hold on pain ends. Well, my life spiraled out of control. My, my family put me in and out, in and out of um, programs, mental health facilities, um, long-term, short-term treatment, um, until they finally, they gave up. And they, my husband looked at me at the time and he said, Jeannie, I can't save you, but I have to save our sons. And with that, he divorced me. And my life just continued to spiral. Now I'd lost my children. I had nothing to live for. As a mom, your children are everything. I was a PTA mom. I was a good mom. How I ended up under the bridge, I don't know. But what I do know is that I was suffering from PTSD. See, from my earliest age, all I remember is being sexually abused. At the age of nine, I watched my father shoot himself in the head. At the age of 15, I was brutally raped by a friend of a family member that had spent his life in prison. My mother was born deaf and she didn't hear what was going on. I ended up marrying at the age of 15. I had my first son at 16 and my first husband put me into sex trafficking. He sex trafficked me. He used to lock me in a room and I'd stay there all day until he came home from work. I wasn't allowed to go out. I wasn't allowed to go anywhere. And he would beat me with a chain if I didn't do exactly what he told me to do. I never thought I'd get out of that, but I did. And like I said, I, I married my second husband. He's a great guy. We're great friends today. And I had a great life, but see all those secrets. There was this big, inside me and I thought that if I married wealthy and I could get all the fancy stuff that I wouldn't be in pain anymore that money was going to take it all away it didn't it was almost to my demise because now I had enough money once I got to the drugs to buy whatever I needed once my husband got a restraining order from me and I lost my children, I gave up the will to live. And, you know, first, you know, I was able to keep an apartment for a little while and I was able to keep my car for a little while. And then I ended up living in my car and then the car broke down or it got repossessed. I don't remember one, but then I started, you know, staying at friend's house and wearing that out because I'd steal from them or rob from them or, come home annihilated and, you know, they would ask me to leave. And eventually I ended up on the streets. When I was on the streets, I lived under the bridge right here in, in Davie. And I'm born and raised in Davie. And so it was really like I was on this side of the spectrum and I went on to this side of the spectrum. But I truly believe that it was all part of the plan. God didn't cause it but he allowed all for me to come back to where I am today. Once I, I'll tell you how I got out of homelessness. I hadn't seen my children in 10 years. 
And every Mother's Day, I tried to commit suicide. I tried to hang myself one day. I cut my wrist. I was, I OD'd. I was taken to the hospital. And early in the morning, I was brought back for another OD. I was just trying to kill myself. And I was angry with God. I was angry. See, I had went. I went through Teen Challenge. I wanted to be a pastor. I loved God with all my heart. And I couldn't understand how he would allow me to end up under the bridge. My heart had gotten so hard and God couldn't get there anymore. And I was so angry at myself and at everyone else that I really felt hopeless. I ate out of trash cans. I did every deplicable, deplorable thing a woman can do when you're on the streets. And you can only imagine what I'm talking about. There was nothing left of me. Nothing. I was an empty shell. I woke up and I'd say, God, why didn't you just take me last night? All I'm doing is taking up the air that someone else could breathe. Like, just take me. I'm in so much pain. Like, I'll never be a mom again. I'll never have my life back again. I'm just waiting to die. Just let me die. And I was mad because he wouldn't let me die. Even though I tried. I definitely tried. I, you know, I, I'd go to treatment and I'd stop that drug and I'd pick up another drug. And I just kept seeming to change because I was in so much pain. I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't get my life together. And a lot of it was that I hadn't told anybody all these secrets. Yeah, my mom knew about the rape and they knew about, you know, that I watched my father shoot himself. But my mom thought because I was a kid and I was still acting okay, that I must be okay. But what they didn't know is that I was suffering from PTSD. I was a very shy kid. I shut down. But I still maintained to be a straight A student. Went on to be Miss Gymnastics. I always, like I said, I obtained every goal I ever made. I always set for myself. I always set very high goals. Well, one day when I was under the, um, one of my family members delivered a letter to me. And I'll share a little bit about what that letter said. The letter said, Mom, I don't even know where to begin with you. It's been so long. There's no hopes of us ever having a relationship. But let me tell you about your four sons. Said my oldest son was a lieutenant firefighter. He was a sergeant in the Army. My third son was going to school to be a BSO firefighter. And my fourth son was doing well in sixth grade. He said, Mom, I don't know if you know it, but you're a grandmother to two grandsons. I had no clue. I had no clue. He ended that letter with saying, Mom, I'm tired of watching the obituaries for your name. And I just wish it would be over. That letter got through. Somewhere in that letter, I knew they must have loved me. They were looking for me. They were tracking me because in the letter he states, Mom, I see you're in and out of jail. So I guess somewhere there was that spark of love that obviously maybe they did love me. And I started my journey to where I am today. I had to go to detox, I went to treatment, I had to go and take care of my mental health issues. Um, I had to go to, you know, deal with the rape and deal with the PTSD and, you know, just keep taking steps to where I am today. And today I'm free. See, I got to tell the story because it's just a story now. It doesn't define who I am anymore. And what I learned is I, I was responsible. I had guilt and I had shame. I was responsible for the guilt because it was the things I had done and I've made amends for those. The shame wasn't mine. It never was mine. But what I learned in all the process is that 
if I want to be forgiven for all the stuff that I had done on the streets, and I was not a nice person, I did a lot of bad things out there. But if I wanted to be forgiven, I needed to give forgiveness. And just as much as I was sick, the people and the perpetrators that hurt me were sick. And with that, I could have compassion and I could forgive them. And so today, I'm free. they can't keep raping me, see? I'm free. And I'm free to be me today. So I started my journey. I did it. Um, wasn't easy. Um, wasn't easy, of course, but it's doable with um, organizations such as Showering Love and other organizations and people like you make it possible for people like me to find our way home. I found my way home and for years into it. See, when I was in upstate New York going to Bible college, I was working and handing out food with Feeding America. And there was a tractor trailer there and God gave me a vision. It was a very clear vision. He told me to take that tractor trailer and put showers on one side, washers and dryers on the other side. I was to put a pantry in it. I was to put blankets in it. And I was to travel every bridge and help my brothers and sisters. See, I wasn't homeless at that time. And it wasn't even in, there was nowhere I would have even thought I would have been homeless. So when I was about four years sober, I remembered that vision. And so I started to bring showing love alive. Everybody thought I was crazy, said it couldn't be done. It had never been done before. I didn't have any money. I had no money. But if God tells you to do something and he has a vision, he's going to provide you. So there was a couple this gentleman's name was Rowdy and his wife named Katrina Gifford. They tried to help me. And there would be moments where I would stay sober and I would try to get a job and get my life, but I always kept falling down. But this family or this husband and wife truly tried to help. me. So it's been my mission to reach out and try to find everyone who tried to help me along the way and to tell them, though I didn't get it, the seeds you planted are what helped me to get to where I am today. So I finally did find this couple and I went and got to see them and I thanked them for everything they had done for me and tried to do for me. And I wanted them to know that everything they had done was not in vain, but that I had gotten it, but because they had planted the seeds. I told them what I wanted to do to bring mobile showers to fruition. Here's what God knew. I didn't know it. If I hadn't went back to say thank you, Rowdy Gifford was the chief plumber inspector for Parkland. He also plumbed, was the chief plumber for the Hard Rock Casino right here in Hollywood, Florida. I told him what I wanted to do, and he said, All right, let's go see it. So I found the bus and I took him with me and we went to Miami and he's measuring the bus and he got done and he looked over to me with his, he always wore a cowboy hat and overalls. And he said, kid, we can do this thing. This is your bus. So kind of made a deal with the guy and I went home and I'm thinking, how am I ever going to get the money? The guy wanted 25,000 for the bus. I had to down to 10,000, but I didn't have a penny. Now, at this time, I'm dating, a, and I thought, hmm, you know, he had good credit. Should I get a credit card? Should I ask him to get a credit card? How am I going to get this money? And I laid down, and I put my head on the pillow, and I heard God say very clearly, 2020. My God, what are you saying? He said, 2020. I'm thinking, what are you talking about, God? And it clicked. If I ask 20 of my friends for $20 and I ask them to ask 20 of their friends for $20, we'd raise $8,000. Well, we raised $9,000 in two and a half weeks. We were able to get the bus. 
So it started with a vision, God with his 2020. It's kind of funny. God's God. You know, I say, I see you, God. And in, um, we unveiled in June of 2017. And we're just about to unveil our second mobile sanitation bus. I'm happy. The first one is called Grace because I said we're all showered by grace. The second one's name is Faith because we all need a little faith, don't we? We do. Sharing love doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. If God said to me tomorrow, my time is up and my job is done, I'll probably cry, but I would gladly turn it over. Someone could take her to the next level. I feel honored that God has entrusted this to me because I am the least that should be running this company. But God takes the least of these and he's taken me. And we go out. And we talk to our guest and I hire from the street. So three quarters of my team of all experienced homelessness for a long period of time. So when the guests come up and we tell them we understand because we lived it as well, it helps us to connect with them. They know that we truly understand. We understand where they are, but we also understand what's possible for them. It because they're in that darkness right now. <laughs> but we see. And so Sharing Love has an outreach coordinator that works with each guest if they're ready. Some just want to shower and that's okay. Some, when they say they're ready to get off the street, our outreach coordinator team gets on, we get on the phone and we start getting them whatever that resource is they need. And then we put down and we work with them to put a roadmap so they can become self-sufficient. We've been very successful. I've been able to see them go on and get married, go back to college, have babies. And I'll tell you this, I got married four years ago and my four sons walked me down the aisle. I have 13 grandbabies with a new one on the way. I get to be a mom, I get to be a wife, <laughs> I get to be a grandmother, and I get to be a friend. But it wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for like organizations like Shawi Ma. We're really the boots on the ground. We're the first ones to meet them while they're either waiting to get into sh shelter, <laughs> or maybe they're waiting for their family. There's many reasons, there's as many different reasons that someone's out there as there are people that are out there. I've, I've heard some horrific stories, way worse than mine. And I wonder how, if I was in their shoes, would I be able to get up? I do a lot of lectures and I speak at NSU, FAU, a lot of the colleges, because I want to educate the community on homelessness and tax. So we can, when I, if I can give you a new pair of glasses and I can help you to understand better about homelessness and how we get there, then we can look through the lens of compassion because everyone out there has been through a tragedy. There's been a derailment. No one in fifth grade like me rose my hand and said to the teacher, I want to be homeless and nobody wants to be homeless. There may be a few. There's a few. Being homeless is a tough life. It is a hustle from morning to night. <laughs> you suffer from sleep deprivation because you don't, how can you sleep comfortably on, on concrete, on a cardboard? I always slept with one eye open. I, I still suffer. I still suffer. I don't sleep well um, because it's kind of like my body's still always on alert. But it's hot. You can't get comfortable. You, there's just so many elements that are going on for them. And 
in whatever that tragedy is for them. The stories are heart-wrenching. So we're there to meet them where they are, to help them, guide them, love them where they are. Before COVID, I, hu I hugged every one of them. I was never afraid to catch anything or get anything because there's something about a hug, right? Especially when you're hurting. We stayed out through COVID. I never once stopped. I regrouped for two weeks to figure out how I could get my team out there safely. And we were able to do it. And we were out every day. You can go on our website, which is showeringlove.org. We have a bus schedule there. In August, we'll be going six days a week. That means grace is at capacity. That's why it's so important to get faith completed because the need is getting greater and greater for us. And I can't keep up with the demand. And we do need the community support. We give all the guests new clothes. We don't give out anything used, gently used. I don't think there, there's nothing wrong with it, but I believe there's a subliminal message there. And we want them to know that they are worthy and they deserve new clothes. So they get a shower, they get new clothes. The last thing we do before they leave is we give them perfume or cologne. We call that the cherry on top. They go outside, they get a haircut, they get a bag lunch. And if they want to sit down and talk with our one of our outreach coordinators, we're here to listen. Sometimes they just want to talk. One thing we always do is ask them their name. Because I can tell you, in the whole 10 years I was on the street, nobody ever asked me my name. They'd beep their horn, hey, you, come get the dollar. But no one ever asked me my name. And when we say, or I say, I am Jeannie Alba, I stand in my power. And we want to empower them, to encourage them, to take their powers back because it's somewhere we've given them away and then help them. I think I kind of feel like I just kind of lost wherever I am. Jeannie, let me, let me ask you this, Jeannie, uh, such a compelling story. Uh, how were you able to uh, navigate your life uh, in such a way uh, uh, that you didn't allow your past failures uh, to make you forfeit your future. I did. You know what? I it wasn't easy because uh, you know every time I I went to detox and then they said okay you need thirty days of of in house and I did that and I got there and they said no 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 you need thirty more days and I, I got in trouble one time and. I was telling someone today, they made me clean baseboards. And, and when I came in, I was 49 years old. And I was like, I'm not cleaning baseboards. You're not telling me to clean baseboards. And they said, that's fine. Then you can pack your stuff and go. And I remember looking out that door saying, I'm not going back out there. No way. I don't want to go back out there. It's too hard. It's too much of a hustle. And not everyone that reached out their hand to me out there was there to help me. I can tell you that. I just didn't want to go back. So I guess I was willing to go to any links. And no matter what they suggested I do, I did it. When I got done, they said, you got to do another 30 days. I did them. Then they said, you need to go to halfway. And I started living with a whole house of women because I didn't like women at the time because I didn't like myself. Today, I, I love women and, and I have lots of female friends. But I think the fear of going back kept me going forward. All I wanted was to be a mom again. All I wanted was to see my kids again. And my son and I had interacted and he said, mom, you stay sober for a year and I'll let you meet your grandkids. I did and he did. And I got to meet them for the first time and that wasn't the drive. You hear them say, hi, grandma. It just gave me the courage. 
And see, all of it, I think if you go back, it's about love. It's about feeling loved, feeling needed, feeling wanted. I finally felt like my kids loved me. See, when I was out there on the streets, my head kept saying, they don't care. They don't love you. They don't come looking for you. I've spoken to my children. And they said, mom, it wasn't that we didn't love you. It was we couldn't watch you destroy yourself. So they were trying to survive too. Today, I have all my children. I talk to them all the time. I see them all the time. And they're doing well in our relationship as well. I think, see now I didn't get the life I got back, but I got a life of, of purpose. I get up every morning knowing I've got to get that bus out there. I work probably 70 hours a week. No one knows what it takes me to keep trying to raise money to get that bus out there. When that bus breaks down, it is not cheap. I don't have big corporate sponsors. The community is our heartbeat. It truly is the us in bus that makes showering love possible. <laughs> it's people like you and invest in people like me and showering love so we can help our brothers and sisters. See, you can't have brothers without others, right? It says it right there. <laughs> so it really takes a team and we have been, I, I'm open to questions. Jenny, before we do that, let me, let me ask you, uh, uh, talk to that single mom that uh, that's working the night shift and uh, her change is strange. Uh, the government's uh, moratorium on rent uh, has already elapsed and uh, uh, she's one step out uh, from living in her car. Uh, uh, what would you say to her tonight? I would just say, honey, my heart goes out to you. Know that God sees you, don't give up. Don't give up, please just keep getting up. As I tell all my guests, don't give up, don't give up, get up. God sees you where you are. Please reach out for help. It's okay to ask for help. Don't try to do it by yourself. And there are organizations around here to help you. It's a struggle. At times are hard right now. <laughs> but just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep doing the right thing. Keep going to work. God says we're to be good stewards of our money. And we all go through a season. And this is maybe just your season. God says we're all going to carry our own cross. I think I've carried mine. <laughs> But when you get to the other side, God has something very special for you. <laughs> he takes our weaknesses and he makes it our strength. He takes our mess and he makes it a message. So you hold on. Don't you ever give up. And know that you matter and you are loved. Hey Amen, Jenny. Go, can you can you just go ahead, Jenny, and just uh, just pray for someone that that may have feel like they're losing their way, uh, uh, feel like they're just sick and tired of being sick and tired, just a couple steps thrown away in the towel. Uh, would you would you pray for them now? Absolutely. God, we lift everyone up right now that is struggling with mental illness, addiction. Maybe they're in an abusive relationship. Maybe it's just financial struggles. God, we ask you to wrap your arms around them. Put them in the palms of your hands. We ask blessings over blessings. Let's doors open. Whatever their need is, God. You are a giving God. You are a great provider. You are the King of King and the Lord of Lords. <laughs> God, we just ask you to, to lead them and guide them to where there is help to help them. No, they are not alone. Reach out, ask for help. Don't let your ego or your pride get in the way. 
We've all been down. We've all struggled and we've all went through something. You are not alone. You're just like me. I'm not unique. But I needed to learn to ask for help. There is help out there. So you just, you know what? Law of averages says you're going to hear nine no's. But there's a yes there for you. Persevere. Keep calling. Keep asking. And God will answer. Amen. Amen. Uh, Jeannie, I'm going to show you some pictures now on the screen. Uh, uh, Jeannie, talk to us about this partnership that, that you do. And just tell us what locations now that you're... Uh, uh, that Grace can be found in. Uh, now on the screen is a picture uh, of Grace. I've had an opportunity to be on it. It is oh. a wonderful operation. And uh, uh, while you're doing that, Jeannie, I think this is Nova Southeastern University who you partner with here. Uh, can you tell them about uh, just the mechanisms of the bus? Uh, because you guys don't have to uh, uh, bring in any water or anything like that. Talk about the mechanism and the mechanics of that and the partnerships you do. Thank you, Jeannie. Oh, thank you. Thank you for asking that question. I love you. So we partner with NSU with the med students. Uh, this actually happened to be the speech pathologist uh, class uh, that came out because they will be working with uh, the population that we serve. So they wanted to come out and get firsthand um, experience. And I have to tell you, I always say, um, Grace was a city bus. And um, so we say from transportation to transformation, that's what Showering Love's about. And we say that whether you are being served or you are serving, lives are transformed. And I have to say, these kids left, changed. And we work with the public health students. They'll come out and look at our guests' feet. We have, um, I'm sorry, NSU, oh, I, I'm not going to say it right, Um uh, like COPD, I, I can't think of their their class, but they come out and they talk to our, our guest about COPD and they take blood pressure checks. And, you know, the partnerships, sharing love is about building partnerships, relationships and friendships. We're building bridges to help those that are living under the bridges, like me. I love working uh, with Pastor Griffin, it has been an honor. And he is, I don't know if anyone knows, but he's a light, right? He just lights up the room. Every time I see him, he is a light. And I and I love, I got to see him this Saturday. He came in Pompano. Uh, we're in Pompano on Saturday. Uh, that picture, we were in ministry, which is on Thursday. And you can find all these addresses on our website. If you go on our website and you look under bus schedule, you can see where we're at. I'm going to invite you to stop in, say hi, take a tour of the bus. Uh, you ever want to volunteer? Come on down. It's it really, I tell you, uh, you you cannot not go home changed. And because something that we take for granted, a shower. Can you imagine the heat index that we have had lately? Being out mowing your yard or working out, I don't know, just going outside, I'm sweating. We have the only, we can go in and take a shower anytime we want. The guests we serve only get a shower once a week when we come. That's it. Sometimes they still have the same clothes on that we gave them the week before. So when the guests come on, they, like I said, they get new clothes, but we give them deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, um, all the hygiene items that they need. <laughs> so Jeannie, what I want to do now is uh, on the screen, everybody, you can see, uh, Jeannie, Jeannie, talk about your, uh, uh, your, your Florida, your 5013C nonprofit and, and the reason I wanted to bring you on tonight to our stock show is because a lot of us have, a lot of us are entrepreneurs. We got very different businesses. Uh, we make money in the stock industry. And a lot of times uh, uh, there's different ways and avenues that we need to give to other 5013Cs other than our churches. And we look for uh, opportunities to uh, be able to give. And I just thought it would be wonderful what I've seen you doing with the homeless and uh, how you change their lives and 
you know, how they're your guests and how you just love on each one of them. Uh, you remind me a lot of Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer, the uh, great golfer, God bless his soul, uh, he never met a stranger. And every time I see you interact with your guests, uh, uh, with the people that are experiencing homelessness, it's just so genuine. It's so affectionate. And uh, on the screen, everyone, you can see this is uh, Jenny's uh, information. Uh, uh, talk about the nonprofit and how people can, uh, at the end of the year, if they wanted to uh, uh, use you as a tax benefit. Uh, uh, how is that done, Jenny? Well, thank you for asking that question. Like I said, you know, the community is our heartbeat. And you look at the word community, it's you. The letter is you. And so thank you so much for supporting us and having us. Um, you can, your donations are deductible. Um, it's a 100% tax deductible. There, you can, you can go, I, I feel uncomfortable asking for money, but you can go on our website. We do have, um, we have a PayPal account or um, however you feel comfortable in donating, that's up to you. I can tell you that. Um, so here's when I built the nonprofit because most nonprofits, right? I'm going to say 70% of the money goes to administration and really only pennies go to the street. In my bylaws, I made it so only 30% could ever go to administration. 70% goes to the streets. I didn't do this to, to get rich. I didn't do this to have a big house. I did this because I really want to help somebody else like me find their way home. I have one lady that works in, in, and Pastor Griffin has met her, her name. And I met her in, she was living in a tent for three and a half years. And I just kept going and kept going and I kept loving her and I kept loving her and I kept encouraging her and she took her steps. And so she finally got her housing. She had went and taken care of her mental health and, we hired her two years ago and, and she never misses a day. And she is a light. She just loves her job. And she loves the fact that she was able to be given an opportunity. <laughs> I love that picture too. Um, the one thing about sharing love is um, I believe that sharing love comes from love. So God is love. So it was bread of love. We give love. And then the community gives us love. So it's really the circle of love. And so when I, when I was thinking of the name, it had to have the word love in it because there is no separation in love. Everything else separates us, but there's no separation when we stand in love, right? We're all connected. And I'm against anything that, that separates us. So... I want to say I love you all. Thank you for everything. Thank you for what you're doing in the world. And thank you for having me tonight. And, and please come out anytime. All right. Well, we're going to throw it over to Kev. Kev, it's your time, man, to unmute, do Q&A. Uh, if anybody have any Q&A, we'll go ahead and let Kev go ahead and do that now. Uh, and if not, uh, I would definitely like to hear from uh, uh, Ms. Connie Thompson. I want to hear your thoughts tonight. Uh, I would definitely like to hear from uh, Pastor Dozel Bonner tonight uh, and Pastor Burrell and then Pastor Ron Harper. After they've concluded, you can pray us out. We on good time tonight. Yeah, so, Tim, man, I, I appreciate it. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. He called you next. I'm sorry, Kev. Yeah, Tim, I was just going to say, um, you know, real, real huge appreciation for, uh, for you having Jenny on. And Jenny, thank you for joining us, you know, this evening. And Tim, you and I talk a lot and you know, it's one thing that I always say to you, man, is, um, you know, life goes forward, you know, and every time you take a look back, man, what do I say is back in the back? It's, it's the pain is behind you. You know what I mean? So every time you turn and look back, that's where the pain is. So you just have to continue to move forward. So I just wanted to share that, you know what I mean? That, that you know, Tim and I talk a lot about these types of issues. And um, if anybody has any questions, I know, Connie, I know uh, Tim and kind of queued you up. So, you know, feel free to go ahead and tap in. So first of all, I just want to say thank you so much, Jeannie. You're a beautiful person inside and out. Your testimony is amazing. I was just like holding back the tears. I had a sister for, uh, for years, probably 15 years that was homeless. And thank you. 
So I will definitely bring um, my two groups of women, Young Women Christian Council and the uh, Young Women of Higher Standards to your bus so we can do some volunteering because this is absolutely a blessing because we never know as you were saying, there's so many wonderful things you said. I would love to introduce you to oh, just so many people that you can help. So thank you. God bless you and your family, your grandchildren, and your great, great grands to come. May you live long and continue to prosper. And I'm so looking forward to meeting you in person. Um, I have to get off the call. I have another call of counseling to do for a couple, but God bless you. I feel like I already know you. So I love you, my sister. And I'm so looking forward to seeing you. Thank you, uh, Minister Griff, for bringing her to us. I am so honored to be in your presence and to hear such a powerful testimony. So thank you. God bless you all. Good night. Amen. Before you, Pastor Varner uh, and Pastor Burrell, let me hear from uh, Dr. LaVon Bracey uh, out of Orlando. Dr. Bracey, please. Thank you so much. This was uh, such a blessing for me. Uh, for five years, I was director of homeless for the city of Philadelphia. So I understand precisely what you are saying. I was able to see so many people who lost their ways. I met doctors and lawyers and people who had really had the best of life to lose everything. This was so powerful and I will just commit uh, even though I am not in your area, I'm going to sow some seeds your way. God bless you and continue the work that you are doing because it's so much needed. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Amen. Before you, before you Dr. Vonner, uh, I want to hear from uh, 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 Pastor Abraham. They're creating the God Zone. Pastor Abraham, unmute. Talk to us, please. You know, as I was listening to what uh, what Sister Janie was saying, it was awesome to hear how God is orchestrating and how he is bringing all together. And when she was sharing in regards to showering in love and uh, how we need to look at um, others who are in need uh, or homeless, you know, uh, with the lens of compassion and uh, just the part where we ask the name. You know, I have, uh, I am going to step up and as I uh, meet and greet, you know, I will definitely keep that in mind in regards to asking the name. And I want to tell you that it's wonderful uh, to hear. And I had an opportunity in nine, uh, 2019 up in Miami working with uh, Showering uh, in Love um, up under the bridge uh, two twice. <laughs> And, uh, but it's an honor and I pray that as you continue to move uh, towards what God is calling you, that we all will be touched and moved and come along your side. Thank you. Thank you. Before you, Dr. Varner, Pastor Felton, let me hear from you, Pastor Felton. Can you unmute Pastor Felton? Am I unmuted now? Yes, sir. Good evening. It, it, it's I do thank, uh, thank you all for the opportunity of being able to hear on tonight. Uh, I think it was Jeannie, I, I thank God for your, your testimony, uh, keeping things in perspective and helping us to realize, as I heard somebody say, as we move forward, we should listen. We, it's, our, it's, it's the will of God for us to, to once we've uh, gotten through something to turn around and help somebody. I believe it was Jesus that would say to Peter, to Peter, I've prayed for you. And then he said, Peter, when thou art converted, strengthen your brother. When you get through, help somebody else get through. And I think that's so important in life. And I thank God for this opportunity here to be able to help even those that we can't see, but that, that's somebody that can reach well, I believe when I look at a genie, it, it, what it does is, is that when it comes to our hand of compassion, she extends our hand of compassion. And I thank you for that opportunity. Amen. Before you, Dozel, I want to go to Macon, Georgia. Uh, uh, <laughs> Can you talk to us? Before you, before you uh, Dr. Ro uh, 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 Vanna, uh, I want to go to Macon, Georgia. Deborah Bradley, can you talk to us tonight? 
And y'all mute your line, Gabba. Is Deborah there? Deborah is here. Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing? It certainly has been a pleasure to join you all tonight. Additionally, your story, the it, it was just a blessing for me in so many different ways. Um, it was it, it was just, it was great. It was just your story. It's just unbelievable to me. Um, and it just helps me to continue my hope, um, knowing that our father is the way, the truth, and the light. I um, certainly grew up in church, um, specifically a Baptist church. Me and too. I praise the Lord daily. Um, for the ones that didn't know, Timothy is my brother. And um, it's, it's just great. The, the, it's like a worship. This is, thing is so exciting to me. I'm real thrilled to be here with you all. Amen. Amen. Okay, Dr. Vonner, it's on you. Hi, Timothy. Uh, I was going to uh, take, a, take a nomination and, and a vote tonight to promote you from Minister Griff to Bishop Griffin. <laughs> but um, you, you end up putting so many people in front of me, I kind of got, no, I'm just joking, my brother. Well, first, I just want to thank God for, for what you do. Uh, we don't just come on here on Sunday nights and learn how to become, uh, learn financial acumen. We come on and, and, and it's a fellowship. It starts with prayer. There's a word of God and it ends with prayer. And, and that's all because of the vision that God has given you, you've actuated it. And I bless God for that. So you continue on by, uh, by, by meeting, partnering with, and then bringing somebody on like our dear sister Jeannie. And you insisted uh, on connecting, connecting us. And I cannot, uh, and I met, I met all measure of, of celebrity. Um, I can pick up the phone and call some celebrities, but there's not any person uh, that, that I would say that, 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 that holds any more value in my life than someone who's a true servant of God, such as such as Jeannie. And Jeannie, the service that you provide, sister, is uh, it's the kingdom of God. We, we try to do that on Sundays and Saturday evenings in our churches, but what you do every day is a demonstration of the kingdom of God. And uh, I just say this, thank you, Tim, for, for allowing my wife and I to be connected to her the other day. What an awesome opportunity, an awesome testimony you shared. Thank you for coming on our show, Dialogue with Dozy the other night and blessing our people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that show again. I'm gonna share it again based on this. And thank you for coming on tonight and showing my brothers and sisters just the kingdom of God and, and, and God's uh, way of, of just uh, picking us up from, from life's uh, sheep pile and bringing, putting us back together again. And for you, to let God use you like that and for the work that you are doing now because of your experiences. And I wanna say this before I go. On, uh, you're coming to us prayerfully, we didn't talk about it, but the third Sunday and uh, blessing our people. And then after that, we're going to, hopefully we can come up with enough people power that at least once a week, one of us are gonna volunteer with showers uh, by showering love. So I know if I have to do it myself twice a month, at least once a week, one of our people will be a volunteer to what you do. God bless you, my sister. We love and appreciate you here. Oh, thank you, thank you. I just, I wanna say one thing, and I had started to say that, that um, no matter where you are, if you see someone who is experiencing homelessness, I, I would like to ask you to um, purchase some flashlights and keep them in your car. So you really can be their light. See at night, we don't have a flat, we don't have a light switch that we can turn on. We're already living in darkness. And then at night we are in darkness. So a flashlight means so much to, to us who are out there in darkness. Cause at night we are literally in darkness and guess what? You'll get to be their light. So go shine your light guys. Pastor Burrell. If Pastor Burrell is not there, we're going to hear from uh, Pastor Ron Hopper. Pastor Ron Hopper, uh, you can give us your thoughts. And then, uh, family, 
We're going to have my brother. He's up in uh, Philly. We're going to have uh, 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 Jimmy to just sing us out tonight. He's going to sing a nice song, whatever the Lord lays on his heart. And then that'll be the end of the call. Uh, right after P Pastor Ron Hopper prays and give his uh, final takes, we're going to have my brother Jimmy in Philly uh, to sing us a song. And then that'll be, that'll be the call for tonight. Pastor Hopper. <clears throat> Yeah, praise God. Bless you, Brother Griff. And uh, thank you for pushing me to be on the call tonight because you knew how tired I was. And uh, But I'm glad uh, that I was able to be on. Uh, to Jenny, just just thank you so much uh, for sharing your story. You know, one thing I realized that I've worked with uh, the homelessness and uh, worked with kids aging out of foster care. And I've, I've seen some horror stories. And uh, your story is second to none. You know, I, I realized one thing in this journey, you know, that we're all, all of us here, you know, we're one bad decision or one situation away from being, you know, of being in that situation or being yes. in that type of yes. lifestyle. You know, none of us are exempt from it. And, yes. uh, and to see the grace of God on your life, you know, just, just reminds us, you know, that, that we ought to do what God has called us to do it. And all of us that are on here, you know, we're, God has blessed us to be able to, you know, we're, we're striving to be financially secure, you know, leaving a legacy for our children. But I'm, I'm convinced that we cannot get there without coming through you, uh, Jenny, without coming through uh, uh, what you do. Because the scripture tells us give and it will be given back to us at a better measure than what we gave you know, press down, shaking and running over. So uh, in, in order for us to obtain, I, I, I know for a fact that in order for us to obtain uh, wealth and do, do, you have to give, you know, the blessing comes through giving, you know, and giving back. So we're, we're excited uh, that on this journey, and I thank you, Brother Griff, you know, for bringing this uh, to our attention. So sometimes it has, to, it takes something to wake us up and we're trying to obtain something. We're, we're praying and we're asking God, Lord, how can I, how can I get, uh, you know, this financial security? How can I get this? Or how can I obtain that? And God, God put things in our way, or he may send a homeless person our way and trying to show us, hey, this is the way to get it. This is how you obtain it. You know, this is how, when I can trust you with a little, you know, and he tells us, he said, when you, when I, when I can trust you with a little, you know, then I'll grant you with much, you know? So, so thank you so much, Jenny. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just looking forward to working with you uh, you know, we love outreach and uh, just wait, uh, look forward to uh, putting my ministry because we go out now every week now we're, we're going out ministering and I, I would love to add your uh, your your organization uh, uh, to to our to our outreach uh, to Absolutely. be able to put that on Saturday. So so again, thank you so much. And Griff, thank you, Doc, uh, for just bringing her on. I just want to say one thing to you before you leave the next time you see someone holding a sign and begging for change. I hope you'll look into their eyes and you'll see me and you see what's possible for them. Man. Wonderful night. That's great. Jimmy, pray, sing us out, man. Sing us out tonight, Jimmy. Uh, Jenny, this song's for you. Uh, hey, everybody. I hope you guys can hear me. Um, I kind of missed all of the uh, interview, but I got a little bit of what I was able to hear. Um, but uh, Miss Jenny, we thank uh, thank God for you. And I was, uh, couldn't hear all of the story, but I'll probably go back and watch it later. Um, but this song kind of uh, was in here for you, and it says, "I will be with you. I will be with you." I will be with you if you will only trust me, trust me, trust me. I says I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you if you will only trust in me, trust me, trust me. He said, I'll fight your battles, 
I'll fight your battles. This is not for her. This is for all of us. I'll fight your battles if you will only trust in me. Trust in me. Trust in me. He says, for I am, this is God's word, that I am. And I have all of the power. Yes, I do. And he says that I will deliver if you will only trust me. Trust me, trust me. God says, if you will only put your trust in me, put your trust in me, put your trust in me. He says, I want to let you know that if you will put your trust in me, put your trust in me. Put your trust in me. Amen. God bless. We'll see you next week. We'll chop those stocks up next week. Uh, but this week, uh, I thank you all. See what God wanted to do with SNS this week. God bless. Have a wonderful week. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now. See ya.